Hello and welcome. Today we are refactoring rock, paper, scissors. Don't worry if you didn't see the first tutorial. I'm providing links to all versions of the code below. Let's get started. We are refactoring our rock, paper, scissors game in this video. Uh, previously, and I will put the link below, we created your first interactive game, as I have noted here in the comment of line one. And this is the game we made. This is the code right here I have open in this window. And you can see it is about 42 lines of code. It is rock, paper, scissors, uh, not played with a web page or in the DOM. We just see the result through alert boxes and confirm boxes and so on. Um, so let's compare to this refactored version that I have on the left that I'll open up. First, let's just look at the logic that we have in the original version and it did not have a loop. And what we're going to refactor with is a while loop and we're going to use an array, which we previously didn't do. Uh, in this version, the original version, once the user wanted to play again, we would actually reload the page with location.reload. And if they didn't enter uh, information that was rock, paper, or scissors, we basically ended the game right here. So there was also the change your mind and maybe next time. But either way, any of these alert results here from the if else statements uh, resulted in the game ending. And if the user, of course, wanted to play again after actually playing the game, they either got thanks for playing if they said no or the page reloaded. Now, I'll pull over this new version, but I'll leave the old version also available somewhat so we can see what was going on to compare the differences. And in the new version, uh, it starts out the same as we can look across and see the lines are the same. But then we introduce a while loop on line five. We did not have that previously. Player choice was defined on line five. And by the way, in the uh, original version, we used let, the keyword let, to define all of the variables. And now we've introduced the keyword const. And I prefer to use the keyword const. And there's a separate video about var, let, and const and the scope of those different keywords when you choose them to define variables that are also in this JavaScript playlist if you follow the playlist. But in this version, we're going to use const unless we need to reassign the variable, such as this variable play game that we define at the top. We start the while loop on line five, and that's what was missing here. Other than that, you can see it follows the same pattern uh, after that, here's line six for the if statement. Here on this version, it's line seven. Now we do look at an or, because or, if the player choice is essentially empty, instead of ending the game right away, um, we drop down into here to check the if statement if it's empty as well. And then, if it is not rock, paper, or scissors, at that point we alert you didn't enter rock, paper, or scissors, then instead of ending the game, we continue the loop, which brings us back to the top of the loop, which is going to ask the player once again to enter rock, paper, or scissors, because they didn't choose to end the game. They just didn't enter the correct data. Now, where a big change comes in besides the loop is in how the computer makes the choice. I'll pull the original version back over. And the computer choice, of course, we got a random number from one to three with this, and we do the same in the new version, but in the previous version, we used a ternary statement and it was chained so we could look if the computer choice equaled one or if it equaled two or the default, if it was three, you'd get rock, paper, or scissors. In this new version, we have an array, uh, RPS, rock, paper, scissors array, and it has rock, paper, scissors as the three elements. We've once again generated a number one through three and then we drop that in to just say which element the computer chose, and we have the computer choice stored in computer. Other than that, the reasoning for the game, the logical decision making, is identical. And then after we decide who wins, we still alert the result, but the play again is a little different. So in the original version, we looked at a confirm window, of course, that returns true or false. And then if play again is true, we reloaded the page. If it's false, we just said, okay, thanks for playing. And it was over and the page doesn't reload. 
in this new version, we use a confirm again, but it's the play game. We don't define a new variable play again. It's play game that we looked at to start the loop while play game is true. So this confirm returns a true or false. So play game is assigned true if they want to play again or false if they don't. And of course, that would either let the loop continue or end the loop. And so if play game is false, alert, okay, thanks for playing, we're going to end the game. We use the continue keyword, but since play game is false, when it comes back to the top of the loop, the loop ends and it does not go any further. And of course, if play game is true, the loop continues and you play the game again. And those are the differences. Other than that, it follows the same pattern that we've already covered with the continue keyword as far as if they didn't enter rock, paper, or scissors, it asks them to enter the correct one again instead of ending the game. In the other examples, it does end the game, but you have to use the break keyword on the I guess you changed your mind maybe next time because they actually chose the response that issues false, so we know they don't want to play, and so then it breaks the loop. And of course, if it asks if they want to play at the beginning and they say they don't, we just say, okay, maybe next time. And we haven't even entered the loop at that point. And once again, we're only at 43 lines of code and the other version was 42. So very similar there. I'm going to pull this over to make sure you can see all of the code and I'll scroll up. And of course you can pause the screen at any point just so you get a snapshot of all the code that you want. We refactored this rock, paper, scissors game with a while loop and an array to just improve the game just a little bit from our original version. Now let's do a quick test of our code to make sure everything works as expected. So we'll start out, we load the page and it asks, shall we play rock, paper, or scissors? We'll test the cancel button first. And it says, okay, maybe next time. So that works as planned. We'll reload the page. Shall we play rock, paper, or scissors? We'll say, okay, let's play. And then please enter rock, paper, or scissors. We'll hit cancel. It says, I guess you changed your mind. Maybe next time. That also works as expected. Reload. Let's play. Rock, paper, or scissors. This time, instead of cancel, we will enter nothing. It says, you didn't enter rock, paper, or scissors. It starts the loop again. So we can test this with something else. I'll just enter Dave. It says you didn't enter rock, paper, or scissors, and the loop continues. So let's go ahead and enter rock, paper, or scissors. And we got a tie game. It says okay, play again. Let's cancel, test that first. Okay, thanks for playing. That's as expected. Reload one more time. Let's play, all right. Let's choose paper this time. Player one paper, computer rock. We won, that's great. Click okay. Play again. Let's go with OK this time. And once again, it asks us for rock, paper, or scissors. Choose scissors. Tie game. Play again. OK, let's do it again. Rock. And computer chose paper. The computer wins. We click OK. Do we want to play again? This time we'll cancel. OK, thanks for playing. The loop ends and the game works as expected. All right, we're back with rock, paper, scissors refactored part two. Now on the left, we have the version we just refactored to that has the while loop, it has the new array, and it no longer requires the page to be reloaded. The loop continues until we just decide not to play. And that is how we refactored the first version of the game to the second version. Now on the right, and what we will go over this time, is rock, paper, scissors refactored with functions. And this has more lines of code, so let's take a look. Of course, there's some blank lines in here, so we can uh, leave that nice space between functions. But instead of about 42 lines of code, I've got 102 lines of code. So it's a little more code for doing the same thing, but it's organized very neatly into functions. And functions will let us make the transition to uh, making this game part of the document object model in the next version. This version actually functions exactly the same way as this version we've already refactored to with the loop. So the user would see no difference. It interacts entirely with alerts, uh, confirm boxes, and uh, that type of interaction.
But let's break this down. And one thing we'll do here is just look at this new version in a full screen. So we start out with an init game function. Instead of just init, we're initializing the game. And in this function, we ask about starting the game with the confirm, and we get a variable start game. Remember, these are functions, so they have their own scope. And so we've defined start game inside that scope. And then we use a ternary. And if yes, if true, we're going to launch play game function. And if false, we're going to say, OK, maybe next time. And that's it. The uh, interaction would be over. Now the play game function, this is the game flow function. So the game flows through this function and everything else is what we would call a helper function. So this is a little bit bigger function than I would normally like to make, but each line uh, added to this function uh, could be just as simple as a continue or a break statement here. So it's not that bad. Instead, I usually like to max a function out at about 20 lines of code if possible. I don't want a bigger function than that. This one has about, uh, well, it has, we're from line, say, 8 to 35. So we're not doing too bad there. Let's just say we're about five lines or so, maybe eight lines or so over than we normally want to be. So that's not too bad. But the play game function has the loop inside it, the loop we created last time. But this time, the logic looks different, and that's because we are calling all these helper functions throughout the play game function. This is the, the workflow or game flow for the entire application. So we start with player choice, and we get the player choice. That's a helper function. So let's find that get player choice function. And you can see it just returns the prompt. Please enter rock, paper, or scissors. This function does one thing. That's the single responsibility principle. And that's what we prefer if we can stick with that. Okay, then after we get the player choice value, then we format the player choice. So let's look at that function. And here's the format player choice. It accepts the player choice. And as long as player choice is true or player choice equals an empty string, which unfortunately would be false otherwise, so we have to put this extra step in here. Um, we're going to return the player choice with the trim method and to lowercase, and so that's going to make it rock, paper, or scissors that we can evaluate, and otherwise we're going to return false. And of course, if it is blank, it's going to go here as well but it could be empty at that point. So let's see what we do in the play game function. So if the player choice is empty, we're going to call the invalid choice helper function and then continue the loop, which of course, again, would say you didn't uh, choose rock, paper, scissors, and it would start the loop over. Let's find that invalid choice helper function. And here's the alert that I was talking about. You didn't enter rock, paper, or scissors, and the loop starts over. Back up here in the play game function, if after we checked for the empty string and continued the loop, now we can check for the false value of player choice. And then it, we call the decided not to play function. And that is another alert. And it simply says, I guess you changed your mind maybe next time. And then after that, we evaluate the player choice. So if it's not false and it's not empty, it must have a value there. So some type of true value, it exists. And of course, we're just checking here if player choice is, is false for some reason, after we evaluate that, uh, it would go back to the invalid choice. So let's look at this evaluate player choice and see how it could possibly be false or otherwise. So. If player choice is rock, paper, or scissors, we're going to return the player choice because that's what it should be at that point. But say I entered in Dave instead of that, so we're, then we would return false. And that's why the game flow once again checks to see if player choice is false because this function returns false if it's not one of the three expected values. So if it's false, we continue the loop and say you didn't enter rock, paper, scissors. Otherwise, the computer makes a choice. So let's look at the get computer choice helper function. 
And here we are, and this looks familiar from our last refactored version. So we get a random number, and that random number helps us pick one of the three elements in the RPS array, the rock, paper, scissors array, and we just return whichever element is picked, and that's the computer choice. So now the computer has made a choice, and then we need to call the determine winner function, and it accepts two uh, parameters, the player choice and the computer choice. And whatever determine winner uh, returns to us goes into the result variable. So let's take a look at that determine winner function. And as you might have guessed, it has the game logic in there that we previously had in our other version. And really nothing changed in this game logic. It's exactly what we had uh, in the previous versions, except now it's a function. So it's accepting the player and the computer choice. We run that logic and whatever, uh, whoever the winner is or whatever the value is goes to winner and then we return winner. And that winner becomes the result up here in the play game function. And now we've got a display result function when we pass in the result. So let's look at that helper. Display result is alert result, very simple function. And we come back to if ask to play again, this must either return true or false, we could guess. And as we see Visual Studio Code pops up the highlight, it equals a Boolean. So yes, that's going to return true or false. So if it's true, we're going to continue the loop. But if it's false, we're going to call thanks for playing and then break the loop. So let's check out that thanks for playing. And we can also verify the ask to play again while we're down here. Yes, ask to play again is a confirm, which if you remember a confirm pop-up will provide either a true value or a false value based on the user clicking OK or cancel. And thanks for playing is just an alert saying, OK, thanks for playing, which of course the user then clicks OK and the game is over. And that goes through the entire logical flow of our rock, paper, scissors broke out into functions. And as you can see, We've tried to simplify most of these functions down into doing one thing, which would be the single responsibility principle. They may not all adhere to that strictly, but for the most part, it's doing a pretty good job of that. And then, of course, our game flow function is the one that's a little bit bigger, and it flows through the entire game process, and it has the loop inside of it. And there you go, rock, paper, scissors refactored with functions. Again, it plays exactly the same as our second version, except this is just broken out into different functions. And this is what we would want to do if we were tying our game into the document object model of a web page. And of course, that's the next version of the game that we will refactor to. I'm going to provide the code for all three versions of Rock, Paper, Scissors that we have gone through so far in different gists on GitHub. And I will put the links to those three versions below in the notes for this video. Hi, I'm Dave, and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Remember to keep striving for daily progress instead of perfection. Subscribe to my channel and ring the bell to be alerted when I post new tutorials. I'll see you next time.